Hello everyone. One of the things that Power Automate is clearly missing is a framework, basically a structure that would allow users to build replicable and scalable RPA solutions. In short, Power Automate Desktop is missing a framework. So in order to fill that gap, I decided to replicate the basic features of ReFramework and build them in Power Automate Desktop. If you don't know what ReFramework is and why it is important to build reliable RPA solutions, probably it would be best if you can watch some other videos that explain that concept. In few words, this is ReFramework, so a standardized high-level structure of RPA solution that is built in UAPAT. Similar high-level solution structure are recommended to be used also by providers of Blue Prism, Automation Anywhere and probably many other RPA companies. So how does it work? Basically, these arrows that you can see allow the robot to smoothly transition between different stage stages of robotic process execution. There is a stage where a pro process is initiated, a stage where data from processing is being obtained, and a stage where a transaction is processed. This way, the RPA solution works smoothly and reliably. Reframework allows the robot to safely recover when a system or business exception is encountered at any stage in the process. Also, it allows developers to compare different solutions faster and troubleshoot them as every solution uh, follows the same pattern and it's easy to review and find potential errors. So very similar structure I have recreated in Power Automatic Desktop. It is a mostly made of if statements, go to actions and labels. I also put some on error blocks to highlight each phase in the process. As you can see, the automation starts with init stage. I'm calling here the subflow that initiate basic settings, opens an Excel file with transactions and starts up applications. The structure of this subflow is similar to the one that you can find in the UiPath's framework. There is one key difference though. Instead of using an Excel file to store configuration, I'm using an input variable called config which is a custom object in JSON notation. This variable allows me to store all the settings related to the process. Those of you who knows the frustrations associated with the config file in UiPath will be pleased to hear that JSON config doesn't cause file is being used by another process exception. It also eliminates the need to convert the content of Excel file to dictionary and later connect correctly with other components. The result is similar to what you can find in UiPath. I'm running two separate desktop flows to launch and log in to the UiPath demo application. This is the way how I build components in Power Automate, though I think probably most of you still are using subflows for such purposes. If an error will occur at this stage of the process, I will jump straight to the end process label. But if everything is okay, the robot moves to the next stage, which is validation of whether there are more transactions to process. In the init stage, I was checking how many rows my transaction file has. So now I compare it with the value of data row variable which plays a role of an iterator in the process. It will be increased by one every time a transaction is processed. Similar logic exists in reframework for processes without queues. At this stage, I'm also assigning values to process-related variables that starts with the var prefix. When there are no transactions, the robot will move to end process label. But assuming that there are still some, some transactions to process, the robot moves to process transactions stage. Process transactions subflow starts with simple data validation. Here I'm checking if one of the process related variables is empty or not. If it's empty, it will trigger a business exception. But if everything is correct, the robot will enter data into CRM system as designed. Here I would like to talk a little bit about exception handling in Power Automate Desktop. 
Uh, though Pat offers many different activities to handle exceptions, I don't feel like it was designed as one system. First of all, there, are, there is no concept of business exceptions. This data validation exception would not be captured on block error that is designed to capture only system exceptions or data conversion errors, but still would be difficult to recognize one type of exception from another. That's why I have decided to store exceptions in last error variable and trigger business exceptions by assigning to it a value that starts with business exception prefix. Um, not perfect, but works. I will use this variable to determine the type of exception and how exception should be handled. Inside the onError block for the process transaction stage, I have included some parts of the logic that allows retrying data entry in case a system exception occurs. I also take a screenshot of the error. Then I have a few if conditions that allow me to determine which step should be next depending on the result of the transaction processing. First, I check if the maximum number of retries has been reached. If yes, the item will be marked as system exception in the transaction Excel file and the process will start from the beginning by restarting the application and processing the next item in the Excel file. Then I check if there are no errors by validating last error vari variable. If there are no errors, I can safely say that everything has been processed correctly and the item will be marked as completed. But if there are some errors, I will be verifying the type of the error. If that's business exception, there will be no need to retry as simply input data is incorrect. The item should be marked as business exception and the next one should be taken. If that's not a business exception, then it has to be some form of system exception. So the process should be initiated from the very beginning. This will last, of course, as long the maximum number of retries is reached, which is validated in the first condition. And of course, in the end, there is end processing stage that closes all the applications uh, and the Excel file. Maybe not all features of free framework has been reflected in the flow, but I think the core functionalities are included. The Power Automate desktop process built this way will behave very similar to free framework during the execution. So no more talking, let's see how that works in practice. Here I have my file with transactions. The first item should be processed correctly. I have an item that will cause a business exception in the second row. When the third item will be processed, I will be closing the application to simulate an error. So the robot will have to retry the data entry. While processing the last item, I will be closing it every time it tries to um, enter the, some data into the application and use that robot will throw a system exception. Okay. Okay. So let's start the process. Of course, I'm initiating everything, opening the Excel file with transactions. First, I, the first item will be entered correctly. The second item has business exception as there was no value for one of the variables. Now when it comes to the third item, I'm just forcing it to close. Use of that it will uh, throw a system exception that should be handled by the framework. So now the system recognizes that the item should be retried so that it's opening the application once again and trying to enter the data after the restart. Yeah, this was completed successfully. When it comes to the fourth item, 
I will force it to throw a system exception, mark the item as system exception. So when it's, when it's trying to enter data here, I'm just closing the application. That was the second try. Probably it will be trying to enter the data once more before it marks the item as a system exception. Okay, that was the last try and the item will be marked as exception. You can see the exception message here. Okay, and all item has been processed. This uh, more or less works exactly the same as reframework from UA pattern. I mean, it's very similar when it comes to the functionality. Of course, it was impossible for me to replicate all of the features as the reframe was just too complicated and very specific for, for UA. But thank you for today and hear you next time.